your email, pay bills, log on to Facebook. Take a moment to wonder who else may be watching. With free Wi-Fi available almost everywhere, it's easy for predators to lure you into a fake Wi-Fi hotspot and then invade your privacy or worse, steal your identity. And in depth tonight, Sabrina Dami worked with the computer whiz to set up fake Wi-Fi hotspots with the FBI standing by. All the tools needed to set up a Wi-Fi hotspot fit into Addison Osterhout's red backpack. The 23-year-old works for Computer Answers in Albany. It only took him a few minutes to pull out a basic router, plug it in, and connect to it wirelessly. Then he created a name for the access point. In this case, we're going to call it Linksys. It's a pretty common one. A and a few moments later... This is a list of the computers that have connected to this network. Um, we've got mine at the top. Uh, three Android phones and an unknown third party. Um, looks like probably a Macintosh. We set this first test up in a library. Then we went to a coffee shop and did the same thing. And within less than a minute, two people tried to sign on to our Wi-Fi hotspot. Anyone can pull up to a library or a coffee shop and they don't even have to go inside. Uh, they can just power on their laptop and start up a fake access point. So the general rule of thumb, which is really common sense, if you're not logging on to your own password-protected wireless network, then don't do anything sensitive on it. Don't check your email. Don't check your bank account. Uh, don't do anything that requires a username and password. And that includes Facebook. Addison downloaded free software that came out just a few months ago to demonstrate an attack. I logged on to his Wi-Fi hotspot and then logged on to Facebook. Instantly, my account popped up on Addison's computer. And he could post messages and contact my friends from my account. It's called a man-in-the-middle attack. So I'll set up my fake access point. You'll connect to it. And you'll reach out to Facebook or Gmail or your bank. And when I see that request come into my laptop, instead of connecting you directly to that site, I'm going to connect you to a fake web page that I'm broadcasting from my laptop. Addison demonstrated this by setting up a fake web page for a local bank. And it'll actually let someone log in. It'll log right in, yep. And that would give Addison access to all of your bank account information. So again, if you're logging on to an unsecure wireless network, don't do anything that requires a username and password. Change your password often, and don't use the same password for all of your accounts. And when possible, use HTTPS instead of just HTTP. The S encrypts your password, but it won't protect you from all attacks, like the man in the middle tax. By the way, how did Addison learn how to do all of this? Well, he's a computer science major, but what really taught him in great detail was a popular video website. YouTube. Yeah, YouTube was very helpful. Um, they gave you step-by-step -step video instructions on how to perform a lot of these attacks. For the purposes of these demonstrations, our Wi-Fi hotspots were not connected to the Internet, so anyone who logged on couldn't get on the Internet, and therefore we couldn't look at anyone's personal information. Now, Facebook just recently rolled out the more secure HTTPS option. To find out how to enable it, go to our website, WNYT.com. Our Internet series, safety series, continues next week. We will show you how much information about yourself may be out there. You may be surprised. Live in the newsroom, Sabrina Dami, News Channel 13.